All right, well, welcome everyone to this sort of podcast, sort of video Zoom call thingy, my bobber, uh, featuring Lucius Fox. We got Paul and uh, I was about to say Drake. That's the same person. <laughs> Paul and Jeremy here. So Hi. welcome, welcome, welcome. We uh, we've already been talking for like five minutes before this, so it's not Thank like you're just getting in here. What was that? you say something oh thanks for having us i'm so sorry i was like <laughs> the like processed in my brain like five seconds slower than it should have all right um so just um simple icebreaker th- i don't know if they're gonna be simple but we'll we'll dive into them uh first this could probably be at jeremy um just kind of tell me about the general evolution of lucius fox and um where the project originated and kind of how it's evolved into what it is now so uh i started working on this project when i moved back to kalamazoo after college which was uh about five years ago now and it started out as just kind of just something i was doing on my own it was more like kind of psychedelic rock and more like singer songwriter stuff and i just i met up with one of my good friends from elementary school middle school and high school, uh, Alex Guzman, and we started jamming. And we played a couple shows playing the more like singer songwriter stuff. And then we just started kind of jamming on the type of music that we were into. And it slowly moved to like more like heavier, weirder territory. Um, and then me and him recorded an EP and an album together. And then he left the project and uh, I was playing with a guy named John Fleming. And we recorded an album as well. And then uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, uh, Paul and I started jamming together in this project. We'd been playing together previously in a band called Portager. And uh, when John left, I hit up Paul and asked him if he wanted to play. And uh, yeah, it's just been kind of an ever evolving thing, just getting more and more terrifying as it goes, I guess. Yes, yes, and more (laughs) engaging as you go. Um, I was just, I remember the first house show I saw you guys at, I don't even, it was sometime last year, I was just absolutely mind blown at all the tone that was happening, uh, with your dual amplification. And we'll talk about that later too. But, um, where for you personally, Jeremy, what was the thought with a two piece rather than any other number, I guess? Yeah. Uh, well, it kind of started out just as necessity. Uh, I just moved back and I hadn't lived in Kalamazoo for five years, so I wasn't as connected with the the music scene around here. So I was just jamming with my buddy. We played a couple shows with uh, my friend Brian Ritzer, who plays bass in uh, another band I'm in called Celestial. But generally, it was just us two, and it just became easier to do it with two people. And then once we started like really getting into like more technical and weird music, I just really liked the idea of like making technical weird music in a two-piece setting and still having it sound full and uh just not minimal or yeah boring so it just it became kind of a creative challenge and it's just it's been a really like fun constraint to put on myself with writing just how can i make this stuff as out there as possible while maintaining the limitations of me and a drummer Right. And I think I've done a similar type of thing with that with one of my buddies, Dylan Geisler, where uh, we were kind of working on the Rookie Plenty stuff a little bit. And it was kind of just the two of us last summer, just, you know, toying around. Never actually, you know, went anywhere. But hopefully once this quarantine's over, maybe we'll get back to yeah. it at some point, you know. And I've been noticing that, noticing that, too, with like Origami Angel, um, some other bands that are just kind of in this two piece mold. And I'm starting to think this might be the future. Like, I don't really know. Yeah, it just it it's it's a lot easier to coordinate when you have two people. It's easier to tour. Uh, We went down South this past summer and we were able to fit all of our stuff into like my small SUV, which is really nice. Right. Um, Yeah. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. That's awesome. And so over to Paul now, these, this can kind of be a Jeremy question too, but more at Paul. Uh, When did you start playing music? And if you could play another instrument, what would it be? Um, other instruments then you talk about that a little bit i started in middle school so drums about 13 years 
years ago. Okay. Good. And slowly I've just just kind of picked up everything else. So I yeah. play a little bit of guitar and bass and keys, but if I could be ridiculous like Jeremy at guitar, like I would definitely pick guitar <laughs> as a second instrument to be real good at. <laughs> you guys could do like a soft core thing where it's like Fox Lucius and yeah. just like Paul on guitar and Jeremy on drums. <laughs> yeah. Like super like laid back or something. Um, yeah. One more thing for Paul. Uh, what do you love most about playing with Jeremy? And that can be like anything. Oh, man. <laughs> doesn't have to be just one thing. Honestly, just <laughs> the energy that, like, I have to bring such a high level of energy just to be doing what he's doing or trying to. And yeah. uh, so that's something to always try and live up to is just be, how ridiculous can I be on this drum set for this, for this show? It's a Which full aerobic. Nice. Yeah, it's a full aerobic workout. Like I just see you both just like getting so sweaty. I'm like, you don't even need to work out at this point. <laughs> I I would echo all that with Paul. It's just I feel like over the past year, like really like the trajectory we've kind of taken is just like, how can we be as ridiculous as possible? Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's just it's so it's it's really fun from just a writing and like performing standpoint of just yeah. like both of us just kind of pushing each other and exactly. Just, being wild and i the thing i love about that too is it's it seems like there's a stronger is it viscerality or vis i don't know how to pronounce words i'm not <laughs> an english major but you know it's visceral visceral <laughs> and um yeah you notice that with bands like night versus which i talked with jeremy about it yeah. one or another that's I'm like this sounds a lot like night versus but it's it's definitely your own sound and with the two-piece uh i guess platform it makes it a lot more um like grunt not even grungy i'm just saying words <laughs> no I, I i i hear what you're saying yeah exactly it's got a, it's got a rawness to it exactly um okay so that's those were the uh icebreaker ones i guess we got some more icebreaker ones sort of but this is talking into the album that I can't also pronounce either, Quaternary Pan. <laughs> Don't worry, I have trouble with it too. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing is I'm in a geography class and we're studying uh, geological <laughs> stuff right now. And I was just oh, like, sweet. like glaciation and uh, all that. Yes. <laughs> and Jeremy, you're obviously a high school science teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Rotated around, obviously yeah. bringing the themes in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, this year I'm teaching astronomy, geology, and chemistry. Okay, so directly, yeah. you could argue directly linked to this album. But yeah, more. I, I got some questions for that specifically. Um, so how does this tie into the geological evolution of Michigan? I know it's like supposed to be the the periods, but just talk about that a little bit, and then we'll go. Yeah, that. so it's like a really uh, wide ranging timeline kind of of this area but the last album for this project that I wrote was about like an exoplanet system so I wanted to do something that was a little bit more rooted in this area in particular sure um and I just kind of got to thinking about just like how much I love the Great Lakes and Lake Michigan and stuff uh but basically this is it's a 20,000 year timeline like starting from when the Laurentide ice sheet was covering the area and carving out the Great Lakes all the way through uh, X Whenever. many years from now, yeah. when humans are no longer around. <laughs> um, Robots come on, come along, and then yeah, you know, no. or some other living thing. Right. But yeah, it's just that uh, it became like trying to make as like wide reaching of a storyline as possible with a lot of like the science that I teach rooted in um, a, a little bit of history and then some some speculation uh yeah with lots of crazy Thanks. riffs <laughs> yeah drums. so that that's another thing i wanted to touch on when you guys were you're talking about the energy a lot and also um just kind of relating that to the geological themes i was wondering if it was kind of agreed upon before that this is you're, you're going for like a more spectral feel that represents each of those different time periods or is it more of like a a soundtrack to the 
uh, film, so to speak, of, you know, those movements. And I guess that's kind of the same thing that I'm saying there, but I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a mixture of both. Uh, like some of the songs I had like an idea in mind of like the type of sound, like the first track on the album Carved by Glaciers starts out with just this like yep. super doomy riff. And I was just like trying to emulate like what would a glacier sound like if it was like a guitar. slowly, <laughs> yeah, slowly carving its, its way through the earth. Yeah. Um, so like sometimes like that, it was a little bit more on the nose. Uh, other times I had like, pieces of a song first and then I started to think about like how this could fit into this overall like arc that I'm trying to convey um like I think it's like the the sixth song on the album uh Crimson Straits which is kind of like about the effects of like colonialism and conflict between native people and uh like western folks um so with that one I was just like I just want to write a really aggressive sounding song that's just like constantly just one-upping itself and getting crazier and crazier right. um to just convey that kind of like uh almost like combative like period of time and so you so jeremy has the crazy chaotic guitar riffs and then paul you come in how do you go about writing drums to this crazy madman <laughs> and like how is the process a little different maybe from other products you've been on luckily i've i don't know i uh i was in a punk band before Lucius Fox and actually living in Jackson and we had played with Lucius Fox I think five or six times it was was a lot so I already knew his kind of vibe style and I really yeah yeah, I really liked it and that was the stuff that I usually tend to play and uh so it kind of fit and then we started with Portager and that's when we really got a feel for each other and that was pretty jam bandy but just not super heavy and crazy right and uh yeah that was with brian and so i got a feel for that and then once i joined lucius foxes it's like okay it's on now now it's just like (laughs) time to go baby (laughs) like a large majority of stuff he'd either have like the song layout pretty much done or like most of the riffs right and it would just be like hey i got this song let me play it for you or like you'd have a rough draft and I'd listen to it and it would pretty much be like, all right, I listened to it last night and just things started popping in my head. Let's see if I can do that yeah. first section how I want to. And he would just play it and I'd be like, how does that sound? And he'd be like, oh man, all right. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. next one. And it's like, yeah, next one, let's go. Let's go. So oh I mean, it's, every time he writes something new, I just kind of sit back and I don't try and play immediately because I'm like, all right, I need to just hear this. Yeah okay that was it okay cool right uh let's let's try that little first part maybe and it's <laughs> like, just yeah you gotta like no, absorb slowly it. build up yeah like you have yeah, definitely that's yeah that's a main thing i've been noticing too like even last summer when i was doing that with my my buddy dylan like we do we do the same exact thing and he'd i'd be like wait just listen <laughs> before you <laughs> before you just go crazy and um yeah, especially with you guys, I feel like that's even more essential with polyrhythms and just noodling and sonics like, and all that good stuff. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other general thoughts from you guys on the album or anything you want to talk about before I move into the next set of questions? I'm really just proud of it. I, f- I feel like it came out really, really well. Uh, I mean, we tracked the drums almost like entirely live. I think there was only one track where we used a click. And then oh, wow. We, just, we put a lot of, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Dang. <laughs> yeah. You see and it? Uh, or I think it's the song, uh, it's the second to last song. It, it was but a long day and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah extinction was, rebirth was uh with a click i'm guessing yeah yeah there's just a couple sections in there that were like really hard go ahead sorry but yeah we <laughs> we've just like we've had a really positive response from our, our friends and anybody that's been cool enough to check it out and it just yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out uh the dudes uh brendan and david who runs studio pepper did a really really fantastic job with yeah uh the recording the mix and the master and i'm I'm yeah. just really proud of how everything turned out yeah for sure right on um 
All right, so we're going to get into these are like the final thoughts slash just kind of dumb questions I came up with that are kind of pertaining to both nice. of you. Uh, so the first one, how do you plan to write music together with the pandemic situation going on? I know like three days ago on Instagram, you're like, all right, time to write the next album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I've been working on some other music stuff just because I have time. And then the other day I was just like, all right, it's time to start writing new Lucius Fox music. There you go. So I, I went downstairs and was like, all right, I have an idea in mind. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, Speaking just for, from my end, uh, I'm just trying to put together some stuff. We have like an idea for what we're going to do with our next thing. And mm. um, so just starting to write with that kind of stuff in mind. Um, yeah, that's like me. Something futuristic, I'm guessing, but you don't have to spoil it. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. We can't tell anyone can't. what it actually is. That's fine. I don't don't want that information making its way to the the dark web or anything or you could you know tell them now since we're going to be in quarantine for a while and then we'll just have to sit with it and be like oh my god i want another lucius fox album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right and then this can be we'll do paul first and then we'll do jeremy second on this one uh favorite album that has come out this year and or song from anyone <laughs> that's a toughie <laughs> on the spot <laughs> I've honestly been listening a lot to this. <laughs> They're like electro pop from France. Yes. <laughs> but uh, there's this guy, uh, French 79. French 79, okay. Yeah, there's this song called uh, Hold On. And there, well, there's a few. I, I heard one. And then I just had to check out the entire album. And I was like, yeah, man, this is killing it. And it's sure. someone that's just nice to put on and do dance beats to. too and just start yeah. getting ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've been feeling that a lot right now. But um, okay. The Strokes new album just came out. That's yes. real good. Peach Pit just came out. Yeah. Peach Pit They're real funky. Out. So oh, yeah. yeah, I'm feeling funky and dancey right now. Still Woozy just popped out a new single too. There's like literally there's just so much music going on right now. And it's crazy, especially since like we're all in quarantine. But like, I don't know. It's one of the most vibrant musical times I've seen lately from the time I've been alive anyways. And then Jeremy, what do you got? Um, I've been really into an album by a band called Future Birds. They're like a psychedelic country band from Georgia. Sweet. I believe, uh, but they put out an album called Teamwork back in January, and I've been listening to that a ton. Uh, I've been really in kind of like a folky like kick lately. I really like the new Waxahachie album that came out a couple yeah, weeks yeah. ago. I gotta um, check those out, Phil. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Uh, there's a really crazy uh, New Zealand like super dissonant death metal band called ulcerate that just uh their album's coming out next week but it's streaming today i haven't gotten a chance to listen to that yet but i'm pretty stoked for it you do that right after uh, this yeah uh and yeah. the new caspian album is really really good as well on circles sure. it's a super pretty album i'll uh i'll make a link to all of those uh in this i'm guessing it's gonna be a blog post or something just to all your guys's <laughs> like recommendations or something um, awesome. The funny thing is, I've actually been into like heavy stuff lately, which is weird. It's really not that weird. That's <laughs> kind of my realm, but like I don't write like that at all. So it's just I write like more folky, and so it's just it's just funny. But yeah, it's weird. Like I I've, I've gotten more into I think heavier music because I've gotten older, which seems kind of opposite. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> um, and then this can be like this is another general question for both of y'all. Uh, most ludicrous show you have each played or just the best one either or uh, no real parameters with that question just just a question <laughs> uh craziest show i don't know maybe i've been to or yeah or that you've played or been to whatever so a band called twin peaks which mm -hmm. if you listen to them like that they're fantastic but you wouldn't expect to like almost die yeah at one of their shows <laughs> But like I went moshing with, uh, or what? Literally the entire crowd of probably like 300 people. It was uh, at the Blind Pig. Yeah. Um, I think I was actually on my feet 
while they were playing, like on the actual ground for maybe five minutes of it. I was just getting pushed around and lifted up and I don't think I've ever been a part of right now. But it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. The uh what did I there was there was a house show back in February. It was all like indie stuff. And people were just moshing. It was so nuts. Like I don't was even the, know why. That origami angel show? No, they were moshing there too. I didn't mosh in that one, but the that was uh, that was scary. That was a crazy show. Like they it was, were, it was cool, but yeah, there yeah. was a lot of people up in the air, and there were people like guarding the monitors just to make sure like no one would yeah. fall or something. But no, the the house coat uh, one. I think it was a bunch of my Matt major friends in the Western program. They just kind of organized a thing for some dude's birthday, and yeah, it was just like a bunch of indie bands moshing. It was so fun, but. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, seems like to be a trend. It's not just metal; yeah. it's, it's evolving. Um, and then Jeremy, go ahead. I'm just like blabbering away. Uh, I don't know if it's crazy, but more just like awkward and embarrassing. But when sure. I was in high school, uh, the, the band that I was in my junior year of high school, we were called the Doug Trio. We were, we were a three-piece, a power trio, named oh, after man. Pokemon. Um, but yes. we like made this. I think it was on MySpace actually, because it was it was back then. Ooh. Um, but like we made like a show that we were gonna have at this park in Ashtamo on a Saturday, and we drove out there on the Saturday with all our stuff in the middle of the day. And there was like a family at the pavilion where we were gonna play, like having a family reunion. <laughs> so instead of playing there, we went. There's like a funeral home next door, and we just like plugged in our stuff. <laughs> there and like used extension cords to just like play in this field and oh my god like five or six of our friends came and it was <laughs> it was so bad oh my gosh just straight up like i don't even know it looks like a music video shoot honestly but we were just like we we were gonna play that show there was no way that we weren't gonna play that show right even if we were stealing the funeral <laughs> homes like angsty angsty teenage boys just stealing yeah. funeral home power you know yeah how it goes um okay and then there's a couple more and then we'll we'll send you on your way so you can listen to all your new favorite tunes um (laughs) if you had to pick a band to tour with who would it be and why if it could be like any band dang assuming assuming we're not in (laughs) quarantine you know (laughs) imagine if like virtual touring was a thing though that'd be crazy I don't even know how that would work. That would be cool. <laughs> this is one setup and go. Hey, we're done. You can go ahead now, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, dude. I anything in the world, like I can't pick anything ever, but like that's something <laughs> well, like something that like that's not like super realistic, but like if we were like still kicking ass for a few years and yeah. got bigger and better and evolved. Maybe like somebody like Russian Circles, yeah, like another just yeah. instrumental band that's heavy and dark, but has like prettier, lighter stuff too that we can kind of Mesh in. vibe with. And then just like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, the people that are coming out for them, are right, probably gonna dig some of our stuff at least. Yeah. And they're freaking awesome. And oh, I, for sure. Yeah, I've seen them. I think three times. It's so. But, Every time I just be geeked out to watch them every night, like, You're like bro, we just opened up for these guys. <laughs> yeah, so that would be yeah. exhilarating, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And Jeremy, uh, yeah, I definitely, I'd, I'd echo that too. Russian circles would be fantastic. Uh, or like if we're going with any any band, like touring with the Mars Volta would be pretty. pretty oh awesome. man, Mars Volta. Although intimidating and and scary. But, I feel like Cedric might be a little crazy, but you know what? What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you play with an, is it an Ouija board or something? And yeah, like, the Ouija board. An, yeah. the Ouija board and make an album. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, some other bands that, was, that came to mind. I don't know if you guys have heard of these guys, but Tesseract. Um. Yeah. Like Periphery or something like those yeah, guys. Yeah, that, that would all be cool too. Kind of. I think they're all well. Periphery's American, I think, but a lot of like British metal bands I've noticed. That have yeah, I think popped up Tesseract is from the UK, right? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and then yeah, last go ahead. Oh, uh, just like I guess like locally, 
like it would be yeah, awesome locally, sure. to tour with like Charles the Osprey or Team Two or yeah, Wild Team River Bad. Ooh, you guys in Team Two and like Super Tan or something. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Be a lot of fun. Mm. I su- it would just be. I mean, yeah, obviously nice it's difficult little, now. Yeah, a nice little blend of a lot of things. Um, yeah, I remember the house show I tried organizing with all my friends didn't work out because I booked way too many people. And then I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then last thing uh, for the nights, uh, what advice would you give to younger yeah. musicians just starting out or even just musicians in general or creators or what have you? Jeremy, oh. you can go ahead. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you can take that uh, one. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, just never stop. Uh, just, I don't know. Don't, don't doubt yourself. Persist. And just keep, keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Like, I feel like, like it's weird now because this band has been, at least for me, I've been doing it for a little bit. And I just like, I feel like each time we put out an album, it just gets better and better. And like, I think this lineup right now, it's awesome and it's 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 what i want it to be so, and it, it just it didn't necessarily come overnight but like if you just keep at it you can get a thing to be what you want it to be even if it doesn't seem like it is initially or, yeah that's yeah, i don't know if that makes exactly sense. no that makes complete sense i um yeah the thing i'm struggling with right now is like i have so many different projects with like different tones and timbres and stuff and i don't think they could go under like my same moniker but i'm also yeah. like why not like no one's really done that you know right so it would yeah be interesting i mean to like try for sure so yeah i right. i would just add especially when you're younger or you're newer you might have some bad shows or not be progressing as fast as you want or this or that and just keep at it like he says because everyone has bad shows even when you've been playing for a long time or been playing with the people for a long time yeah and uh listen to everything because yeah. it'll yes. in- influence you if if you, if you like it don't just be like oh people other people don't like it or my friends don't like it or i'm in a metal band i shouldn't like k-pop <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a bit yes. of a ridiculous Snaps. Snaps. thing but like, like what you like just and own just it. yeah listen yeah and yeah. just keep listening to it and it'll start coming through in what you're playing. You'll be like, Oh, how, how am I writing like this? Or why am I writing like this? And it's like, Oh, cause you're digging Cause you this listen stuff. To this. You, yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. That's all I add to that. Yeah. But, my, yeah. Just listen to everything good. <laughs> exactly. My, like I grew up on like blues and like John Mayer and stuff. And then I ventured into like the post hardcore stuff. Actually, what did I discover a couple of weeks ago? It was like, I just looked up like country jazz because I was like, this looks oh, interesting man. and stuff. And there's like Clarence Gatemouth Brown. This dude like shreds so hard, but it's like, it feels like metal riffs, you know, <laughs> but just That's not awesome. distorted and all this stuff. And I got into like Les Paul and actually like listen to some of his stuff and it's he incredible. Yeah. He's, he's a crazy good guitar player. Absolutely. So it was just, it's just fascinating to see where everyone's music tastes end up even depending, not dependent on what you play um musically so yeah Yeah, it's wild like riding up to a show like we're (laughs) we're even though we play heavier stuff we're very rarely like jamming out to heavy stuff on the on the drive somewhere it's usually (laughs) something like pretty or funky yeah Yeah. (laughs) something with some groove to it listening to casey musgraves real quick like (laughs) yeah just gotta gotta a little bit more sunshine there you go well, yeah, it's, that's all I got. Unless you guys got any <laughs> other thoughts, or I don't even know. It's nice to see you. Just yeah, thanks for like, doing I, this. I, I, yeah, thank you so much for yeah. Thank us. you. The honor is mine. I've always wanted to interview you guys, and uh, here we are. It's virtual, yeah. but you know, kind of yeah, better. Maybe actually, yeah, like maybe after better. this we can try it in person and see how that goes. Right. <laughs> this yeah. is a good testing of the waters. I think. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know. Maybe we'll do it again or something. (laughs) Well, it was certainly a pleasure to have Lucius Fox on the podcast. Uh, Go check out Lucius Fox and their album, Quaternary Panorama, that I can never pronounce correctly. And uh, stay safe out there, and hope you have a fantastic day.